I see you also from Bharti and welcome to TFR Insights. Today we have with us once again Stephen Kim, Chief Technology Officer at Carrick Group. Stephen, it's so good to see you again. It's wonderful to see you as well. So, you know, thank you for having me. And today we are going to talk about, uh, of course, you know, the challenges that organizations face with their CI/CD implementation. But I, I want to talk to you about this. Uh, when we look at it, it looks like CI and CD. So do you still bundle CI/CD together or they are two different things? Because that also means you are going to focus on two different areas. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I can certainly see where the commonalities are. I had always categorized CI and CD differently, strictly from the point of view of that they are trying to solve two separate problems targeting two different groups. Uh, and for that matter, I think there are common technologies that can go in and provide value in both areas, like automation, for example. Uh, but CI being primarily geared towards giving engineers and development teams early feedback versus CD, which typically aligns itself much more with things that are business objectives related, like reliability and service quality and agility and things like that, um, unavoidably make the problems largely different, I think. And I, I hope one of the things that we talk about today is that unless we're cognizant of these differences and what the goals are, um, that a lot of times we don't get the yield uh, from CD projects and CI projects that we expect to get. Right. And that brings uh, to the, the, the core of today's discussion is uh, when you talk about the yield that we expect, what is that expected yield? One of the reasons that we say CI is really a solved problem and certainly much earlier on and uh, compared to CD, which I think many would say it is also a solved problem. At the same time, I think we're seeing a lot of challenges uh, there, depending on what the energy objective was. I would say for CD, which I think is the more interesting one, um, just because it's less solved, in my opinion, uh, the goal of CD is um, reliability. Uh, I think that's where it really uh, aligns best. Uh, I would actually even say that the, that the CD projects really should be relabeled SRE projects, reliability engineering, because it really, the goal is we used to say back when we were involved in the um, actively involved in CD projects, like when I was at Google with, you know, Spinnaker and Argo CD and a whole bunch of interesting projects that are out there in Tecton, that um, deployments uh, should be boring, that um, it should be something that the engineer doesn't have to think about, uh, that it really enables them to go and own their own destiny. Uh, and they can focus on product velocity and agility and um, with the reliability being handled for you by the platform. Excellent. And since you brought Spinnaker and I think that's, you know, we met also a couple of years ago at one of the summits there. Now it is part of CDN Foundation uh, project. As you rightly said, it's a solved problem. There are a lot of open source projects which are also being commercialized by a lot of companies. Uh, but then you talk about SREs, which in some cases seems like a cultural movement. So we go back to the same point of there are technological solutions, but technology can do only so much. You have to also bring the cultural changes. So when we look at CD, or you know, depends on how you look at it, how much of it is still technological? How much of it is cultural? Because if you look at the CNCF landscape or the open source landscape, you will see a lot of projects that are out there trying to solve some problem. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I think that um, I would say it's a minority. The technological part of technology part of a CD project is minority. Here's what I here's why I say this. So a technology oriented uh, goal for CD looks like let's automate our re release process. Right, um, but we all know that if you automate a you know a process in place, you'll just make that thing go faster. And if it happens to be a bad process, or one that doesn't really align to uh, really serve your business goals like product agility and reliability, then you're going to just make the same mistake faster. Um, I believe that the CD projects, and which I once again um, think should be really focused around the SRA mindset. Uh, has to be around allowing the application development teams to own their own destiny end to end. Uh, and so the platform, a CD platform being a part of that, uh, needs to allow the app dev teams to own their own destiny. So for example, I'll take a simple example. Um, I talk to teams that talk about SLAs for their product. I know many organizations where they have actually one centrally defined SLA across their entire organization. It sounds kind of silly because different products uh, should have different SLAs because they have different customers, they have different requirements. 
Uh, and the, one of the reasons that teams can't own their own SLA and have that conversation is because they don't own their own release process. Uh, it's a central DevOps team or a centralized release team or a centralized change management team who is given the burden of upholding some SLA that is set that they also don't have control over as well. So how about if we do this instead? How about if we restructure the organization so that the app dev teams own their end uh, release process end to end? And so if something goes wrong with their reliability, that they are the ones who are empowered and held responsible and accountable to say, here's how we're going to update and modify our release process such that that problem doesn't happen again. If you have a centralized team where, for example, you said, let's automate our release process and let's go ahead and um, commission a central team to go ahead and own that across the entire company, then what happens is, first of all, they can't possibly know all the ways to optimize how a release process would yield the highest reliability for a particular app dev team, number one. And for that matter, if that needs to be catered toward particular app dev teams needs, they can't accommodate it. They just can't scale in that direction with sort of the combinatorial explosion of different things that need to go and happen out there. Now, I know I'm exaggerating just a little bit because um, release process is really a core set of common things. But I do believe in that last mile, if you will, of what a team needs to do be able to do to go and meet their needs is varied across. And we see that all over the place because um, teams are, I believe at large failing on meeting their reliability and their agility targets with their product. Once again, thanks for explaining that. Now, I, this once again, since I'm sitting with you, uh, so I want to also talk about because sometimes uh, as the technologies are evolving, paradigm shifts is happening, even the way we define role is also changing. So how would you define SRE today? If I ask. Yeah, um, honestly, I think sometimes we overthink it because it's become sort of a phenomenon and a movement. But I think the answer is right there in the acronym. It's site reliability engineering. There are engineers who are dedicated with one job, which is make your product, your service, your application reliable. And so it's about having somebody who's dedicated sitting on that number, <laughs> on that SLA or whatever it might be. Um, and whenever something goes wrong for a consistent person or a team to think about, oh, that's right, last time we did this, oh, and that didn't work, we forgot about this. Let's go ahead and add that as well. So for example, um, when I was in uh, Google Drive, uh, the Google Drive SRA team would uh, be the experts and they would go and advise the um, software engineering team of, um, here's how we think we should go ahead and make releases in the Google Drive. So they, so they went and um, largely uh, provided guidance on things like, um, let's hold at 5% for at least 24 hours. You know, let's go ahead and hold for, you know, um, one peak cycle uh, at 20%, for example. And this was informed by very application specific things like how that application uses memory, what its network requirements might be, what its upstream and downstream dependencies are such that we can go and detect those, those things at a peak cycle, for example, what percentage of user rollout uh, and what, how much traffic do specific things start to break that we need to go and understand these things. These are all things that are very particular to an application that a central team can't possibly understand. So um, generally when I hear from an organization that there's a central SRE team, I start asking questions like, okay, what does that actually mean? Is that like a culture thing or is that an actual central team that manages the release process for all your applications? Then I would advise accordingly. Right. The interesting thing is that the whole concept of SRE it kind of originated or came from Google, and you also come from Google background. So I mean, the way Google solves problem is beyond the scale of what everybody else can do. That yeah, right. First of all, I want to say the way you scale operationally is by decentralizing. Generally speaking, yeah. You can't have a central group trying to go out and manage and be a central point of bottleneck for things like release management policies and wrangling releases. So we need to figure out a way how to decentralize operationally. That's number one. Um, and not only operationally, but from an expertise point of view as well, because with the example that I just gave about Google Drive, for example, um, they are very domain specific. That's number one. Uh, so that's number one thing to decentralize. The number two thing is um, having an SRE mentality doesn't mean that you have to hire SRE engineers. Because at some point, um, maybe very early on, you don't have a need or the scale of your application to have dedicated SRE engineers, but you have maybe some subset of your software engineers on your team who are particularly interested on reliability. From my experience, it tends to actually be the more senior members of the group who have a more broad understanding of the ecosystem, who are more aligned with top level objectives 
that are business oriented and, and really the health of the team. And these are the individuals who are best positioned and have the interest to go in and say, you know what, I'm going to focus on reliability. That's your first SRE. And then what happens is eventually, at some point, your team scales enough where you need to formalize that role. And then you start spawning and building out a dedicated SRE team for your application. That's probably well down the road for a vast majority of us, right? But I just want to point out that the SRE mentality doesn't mean you have to have people who have SRE in their title today. It's a mindset. And anybody can have that mindset and that responsibility. Now, uh, going back to the point of, you know, CD, um, can you also talk about, uh, you did actually, if we just go through the whole discussion, you have been dropping some very key, very important you know, points that companies can pick and learn from. But if you just want to summarize in one point is that how to build a very effective, you know, CI, CD uh, kind of strategy, once again, CI and CD, depending on how people look at it. So that at one point you do have a lot of projects, tools that you can have products, commercialized product. But as you rightly said, it's more about mindsets, it's more about cultural aspect. So, so to talk about, you know, what are the steps or if you have a playbook that you can share with us? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think one great place to start with, uh, actually this applies to CI as well. But as I said earlier on, I think CI is probably more of a solved problem. Um, and it's a little more um, isolated in terms of its domain because it really is more about the development teams. CD, um, I'll talk about that a little bit more. I think a great place to start is talk about roles and responsibilities and um, ownership domain. So let's talk about an example where an organization is migrating to the cloud. Uh, whether um, and, they're, and along the way, they're trying to go and adopt a lot of best practices um, and CD uh, is a strategic enabler of that migration because it's a great time to go ahead and, and modernize and transform and put some best practices into place. Um, what typically happens or very often certainly happens is that um, everybody kind of jumps on everything. <laughs> and uh, so you have people who are um, really their expertise is in cloud infrastructure and how what is their roadmap and strategy about infrastructure adoption. So maybe today we start with like for like VMs and then later we're going to move on to containerize onto Kubernetes. And then after that, we'll start looking at how we make use of a more niche, uh, um, you know, purpose specific functions, um, whether it be event driven architecture with cloud functions or different kind of data storage options, for example, that evolution should be and needs to be owned by the cloud infrastructure team. Now on the flip side, the app dev teams, shouldn't have to concern themselves with that roadmap and strategy, and they're not better positioned to go and influence that strategy. What is the answer? The answer is roles and responsibilities, and from a technical point of view, abstraction, okay? So this CD platform in the middle, what needs to first happen is go in and identify all the parties who are involved, cloud infrastructure, SecOps, app dev teams, platform engineering, productivity engineering, and so forth, and then make efficient use of abstraction as a tool, as a technological tool, such that they can focus on their area of expertise, meet contracts so that the entire thing works as a cohesive, okay? So let's walk through this example with um, Tekton, for example. Tekton is an open source orchestration engine uh, that is really prescribed to be used with CI and CDX processes, right? Tekton is an orchestration engine. It does flow control, variable, and context passing across different steps. And each of the steps, simply put, is containerized. Now, what that means is that the team that owns the cloud infrastructure, whether they use Jenkins or G Cloud, kubectl, um, Helm charts, Terraform, whatever it might be, they can use that as an actuation detail, but abstract it behind a Tekton step or a containerized contract, right? And they own how it rolls out and how it, and they also own when it fails, what happens, how do they go and deal with that level? And they surface it as a building block to the app dev teams who can use it as a building block to define for themselves, I'm gonna first go ahead and do a, surf, um, a staging. I'm gonna go ahead and do a smoke test. I'm gonna go ahead and do a canary analysis. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, and deploy out to production. They don't have to know about the implementation details of, of building it, but also when it fails, they don't have to worry about that either. It's not in their domain. It's the respective infrastructure team. So that was a simple example of separation of, um, of roles and responsibilities. Infrastructure team, you're already responsible for this, which is like typically the actuating, the mutating mechanisms 
uh, onto the cloud uh, infrastructure. You have SecOps who might be responsible for the step or the set of steps that make sure that our software supply chain is really, really good and it goes and meets our standards. And then you have app dev teams who consume these different components and they build and own the steps, the orchestration of their sequence of how their SRE team knows that we have deployed in a reliable way, right? And that, and I talked about the technical mechanism of how that happened. I think that's a very, uh, a good place to start is talk about roles and responsibilities. What are the technical mechanisms to go to, um, to abstract them and how they come together contractually. Steven, thank you so much for taking time out today and share your insights about how to build successful CI and CD strategies within companies, how to look at it from cultural SRE's perspective. So thanks for those insights and I'd love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you.